Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as some benchmarks on this new video card from EVGA. This is the EVGA NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 and this is the 2GB version. So this card being based on the GTX 650, it does have the Kepler architecture, the architecture that's featured in the 680 on down, although this is a new version of that GPU, this is the GK107. Uh, so with the 660, they came out with the GK106, 650 has GK107, if you guys are following the numbers. Again, this is a 2 gigabyte version, so you get 2 gig GDDR5 memory frame buffer. It runs at 1,250 megahertz on a 128-bit bus. You get support for some NVIDIA features like physics and 3D vision, also support for DirectX 11. Kepler architecture and the 600 series cards are all PCI Express Gen 3 compatible, uh, which means you get a bit of extra bandwidth as well as some efficiency enhancements, although bear in mind, backwards compatible with Gen 2 and 2.1, so if you're running an older motherboard, don't worry, you can still use this card and you really won't even suffer a performance hit. That being said, for power consumption requirements, 400 watt or greater power supply with a minimum of 20 amps on the 12 volt rail for this card. It does have a six pin PCI Express power connector, so bear that in mind. Also some key features over here on the side. So uh, with Kepler, you got stuff like adaptive V-Sync, uh, which is a pretty cool technology. Uh, turns your V-Sync on or off depending on the situation to reduce tearing and stuttering. Also NVIDIA surround technology, you can support up to three displays out of this one tiny little video card. You get two v DVIs and a mini HDMI out, and you can actually support displays out of all those. So a uh, really cool surround technology out of a single video card. That said, let's take a look inside the box at the accessories. We have a power adapter here. Again, six pin PCI Express power con connector required. So as long as you have that 400 watt power supply, you can take two of your Molex plugs, convert it to a six pin PCI Express, and you should be good to go. You also have a video connector adapter right there. So that's a DVI to analog VGA, 15 pin D sub connector on the other side. Uh, bear in mind, this will only work with one of the two video outs on the card, and I will point out which one. You also get an EVGA case badge, so you can put that on your case. You also get an EVGA driver and software manual. Chances are these are outdated by the time you get it, so get the latest drivers from NVIDIA, get the latest EVGA software from EVGA. Also, video cards get hot, don't touch them while they're hot. This is a PCI Express Gen 3 compatible card, in case you forgot when I mentioned that earlier. Also, this is a GTX 600 quick start guide. Uh, that's actually a 680 on there, but uh, this is sort of taking you through the basic setup for plugging things in and make sure, making sure you're plugging in the right PCI Express power connectors. Also, you get a graphics card user guide from EVGA uh, with some more general installation procedures. You can check this out or you can take a look at our how to build a computer tutorial on our YouTube channel. And next is the video card itself. And here's a look at this diminutive little card from EVGA. And I wanted to point out that EVGA does do a lot to keep the card protected in shipping. So you got this little plastic thing that you remove. There's also some protectors on the little sort of faux brushed aluminum panels that are on here. So make sure you peel those off. There was also one on the fan. They're not helping anything, so peel those off. Uh, but looking at the card itself, as you can see, the design adheres to their 600 series design thus far. In fact, this looks like a sort of a truncated version of the 680 or the 670 and uh, people keep calling it cute, and I, I just have to throw that out there. It's a cute little card. That's all that I can say. Looking at the back here, we have some nice big gaps for exhaust for the heat. Uh, that's proven to be actually very helpful to widen those gaps on the PCI bracket so more heat can come out the back of your case rather than going out into your case. Also, you of course have your DVI connectors. Uh, the one on the right there, that's your dual use one. So that one has analog connectors. If you're gonna use that adapter, plug it in there. You also have another dual link DVI plug right there and that is uh, digital only. You also have that mini HDMI out. So you will need a little adapter if you wanna plug that into a standard HDMI connection. But again, you can support displays out of all three of these at the same time. So really nice to be able to, be able to get that surround with just a single card. Look at the bottom, we can see that the EVGA has mainly adhered to the reference design for this card. This is a reference spec card as far as the memory and the GPU goes. GPU, by the way, is a GK107. Still uses the 28 nanometer Kepler technology. The die size has been shrunk down to 118 square millimeters for the GK107. You get 384 CUDA cores by way of two SMX units, uh, 16 raster units, uh, and the core clock these at stock is 1059 megahertz, and that is one thing that you don't get with the 650 as compared to the 660 is the 650 does not have GPU boost. Although, a lot of cards, even from EVGA, that come overclocked out of the box, and they've gotten up pretty high in the 1100 to 1200 megahertz range. That being said, I did also want to point out 
You got your PCI Express power connector right there. Uh, that's where you plug in your PCI Express. Make sure that that is connected. Uh, looking at the front of the card, we have a single fan that's going to be uh, pushing air down over a radial uh, aluminum heat fin array, which is beneath that. It's actually somewhat reminiscent of uh, the heat f the the fin stacks that you'll see on stock Intel heatsink fans. Actually, though, they're giving a nice giving it a nice black powder coating to make sure that it blends in with the general design of the card. PCB on the back is also a uh, sort of semi-glossy black, and uh, the card is quite nice looking overall. I have to say EVGA does do a good job paying attention to detail in that respect. But next up, we're going to get into some benchmarks, and I do want to point out, uh, this being more of an entry-level card from EVGA, my benchmarks are a bit more tuned towards higher-end cards, so um, they did beat up a little bit on the 650, but it did hold its own. But I am showing some comparisons here, for instance, like a 580, which is a really high-end card from the 500 series, as well as the 660. So keep that in mind as you're looking at those benchmarks, that you're looking at a much less expensive card than the comparisons. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the EVGA GeForce GTX 650. This is the 2 gigabyte version. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.